Hello, today I'll be talking about the zoarchaeological remains from the early Bronze Age layers of Chukarichi Hoyuk, a prehistoric settlement in Monde, Turkey. This presentation gives a small case study from my PhD work on Chukarichi Hoyuk in order to explain what the study of animal bones can reveal about prehistory. So on the left you see a picture of Chukarichi Hoyuk, and on the right you see where the site is situated as well as some contemporary sites, the most famous of course being the legendary city of Troy. The Early Bronze Age in West Anatolia is dating to between 3200 and 1900 BC and is divided into the Early Bronze Age 1, 2 and 3. The Early Bronze Age 2 is when you start seeing monumental building and a division of upper and lower towns and sites being really embedded into long distance trade networks. This has often been considered the rise of social inequality and urbanism in the region. The context of Chukarichi Hoyuk, however, dates slightly before this to the Early Bronze Age 1 and dated to approximately 2900 to 2750 BC. And sites of this period, it's not quite known how they've organised themselves. So this is one of the main objectives of my work with the animal bones. Uh, here you can see Chukarichi Hoyuk in the Early Bronze Age is made up of densely um, agglutinating rooms and buildings separated by narrow thoroughfares. There's no obvious evidence of any elite or um, public buildings, but what does make Chukarichi stand out is the intensive and large uh, scale metal production uh, across the site. Here you see a cross section of the stratigraphy of the site dating back to the Neolithic, with its founding being in the 7th millennium BC. We see the early Bronze Age layers right at the top, just before the site was abandoned. So here is an overview of the zoarchaeological remains from early Bronze Age Chukarichi. And on the left, you see everything, almost 25,000 specimens that were recorded, about 50% of which were mollusks. And this is largely the lagoon cockle. On the right, it's just the identified mammal remains. And this is largely sheep and goat, uh, followed by cattle, fallow deer, small amounts of pig, and then numerous other small amounts of other mammal remains. This is a map of phase four of Chukarichi Hoyuk, which is the most complete early Bronze Age phase from the site. The star indicates room 53, which is the highest concentration of bones at this phase, and that's what I'll mainly be talking about today. This is a picture of room 53 uh, taken from the opposite direction from what you saw in the map in the previous slide and you can already see this concentration of animal bones in the left hand corner. This small room had a very high concentration of bones, almost 2000 specimens and most of them were sheep and goat bones. Uh, most of the sheep and goat were quite young individuals and quite a few of them were found in articulation. The excavators found that the bones were sitting in six little distinct piles on the floor. So how to interpret this? Uh, some feasting remains, some ritual, or maybe just household everyday waste. So in order to interpret this assemblage, I compare it to the rest of the site. And first I look at the ages of the sheep and goat. In room 53, we see that the ages are very young. It's usually between about two months and 12 months of age. But if we look at the culling profile for the rest of the site in the lower right hand corner, we see that this is actually quite normal for the rest of the site. They're also quite young individuals. With these kind of culling profiles, we could also compare them to idealized models of herd management. And we find that this kind of herd management system would have, of course result in a lot of tender age meat, but also potentially some uh, low level milk production. Because if you kill off the, the young kids and lambs, you can then use the milk from the mothers for your own purposes. So here are a couple of photographs just to illustrate the age ranges from the uh, assemblage. On the left, you see metacarpals, that's a, a lower a leg bone and all of them unfused so none of them are adult and you just see the uh, age ranges from uh, from the lengths and then on, then on the right you see uh, mandibles and the various range of uh, eruption stages you see from this assemblage. Uh, 
Since the archaeologists collected the bones in these individual little piles, I was able to reconstruct some of the individuals in the rooms. And as you can see, some of the uh, skeletons are almost complete. Some of them are just uh, a few fragments left over, but quite often you see the skulls and particularly the uh, feet bones, uh, the lower leg bones being left behind. So this diagram is also explaining the kind of elements that we're seeing on the site and within the room. It compares the different relative weights of the elements against the standard weights of a modern individual. That is to say, the columns show the difference of um, what you're finding against what you would expect to find if the entire skeleton was being disposed of on site. The yellow is Chukaruchi Hoyuk without room 53, so everything else, and then the blue columns are room 53 itself. And you see that there's an over-representation in room 53 of particularly the skull and uh, mandible elements, uh, as well as the autopodium, which is the lower uh, leg bone elements, the less meaty ones. And there's a real uh, lack of vertebra, to a certain extent, ribs and the rest of the meteor long bones within the room. Here you see some photos of some bones from room 53. And as you can see, many of them were found still in articulation. Even uh, very small bones like the sesamoids, like you see in the lower left hand picture, were found more or less in place. And this suggests that some meat or tendons, ligaments were still in place when the, the bones were thrown away. And after deposition, the bones were not particularly disturbed. Another thing to consider is butchery patterns. Uh, here we see on the left, the types of cut marks you see across the site. And then on the right, just the ones you see in room 53. The yellow colour indicates uh, that the bones are less intensively butchered and then the orange is a bit more butchered and the dark red, the most intensively butchered bones. Since the left hand picture is a little bit chaotic, uh, here it is without the yellow uh, lines. The letters indicate different types of butchery. So the D is for dismemberment, the F is for filleting, and the S is for skinning. In both cases, uh, within and without of the room, you see that the lower limb bones are being removed. There's a certain amount of dismemberment uh, at each of the limb joints, and a certain amount of meat is being filleted off. And since this is leaving a cut mark, this is probably happening when the meat is still raw. So how do we interpret this assemblage? We have a concentration of young sheep and goat, quite undisturbed and being portioned down into smaller parcels of meat. Rather than a feasting or ritual assemblage or household waste, I would suggest that this represents butchery waste. We can see from the heads and feet being left behind that these are not highly valued portions of meat within this society. And the fact that anything is being left behind suggests that the people of Chukarichi Hoyuk are not needing to use every last scrap of meat off the bone. Keep in mind that sheep and goats are probably giving birth once a year at the end of winter. So the, age, the range, range of ages that we see within this assemblage suggests that this uh, assemblage is uh, being deposed over at least a, a six, six month period. This is probably also ruling out anything like it being a feasting assemblage. The young ages of the killing of the animals can be interpreted in a couple of different ways. It could be that this is a elite people eating young tender meat, but I prefer the alternative hypothesis. It could be that this is a, a result of the lambs and kids being killed off before the next winter in order to save on fodder and labour. We also see that labour and time uh, could be constraints for the people of Chukarichi Hoyuk because they are involved in other crafts. We see widespread uh, craft, craft artefacts being found across the site and in particular the metallurgical objects that I previously mentioned. We can also see from the butchery evidence that the carcasses were being dismembered and filleted into small portions and these are already quite small young animals. The lack of traces of burning on the ends of bones that might be suggestive of the meat being roasted instead suggests that the, be the meat is being uh, 
uh, filleted uh, and baked or stewed, perhaps in one of these tripod cooking vessels that are found commonly across the site. The opening of these small vessels is only about 20 centimeters, so the uh, uh, dismembered limbs of the small sheep and goat could fit quite nicely into it. In terms of social organization, such young small carcasses of these of the sheep and goat would suggest that people are eating in quite small, maybe household size groups, sort of six to ten people maximum. Um, we can then suggest that the organization of the herding of sheep and goat are then also probably being organized and owned at a household level. Whilst in the end this assemblage did not end up being some grand feasting event and it is merely a, a butchery dump site that never got cleaned up, I hope this small case study can help demonstrate the kind of insights that animal bones can give to prehistoric behaviour. If anybody wants to learn more about this particular case study in detail, I co-published a paper in the Journal of Archaeological Science Reports this year, 2020. Uh, so I will provide a link for that in the description of the video. Many thanks for watching this video. At the end of the live broadcast, if you have any questions, you can put them in the comment section and I'll be around to answer them.